How's it going guys? JP here and welcome to another DVD slash Blu-ray update. It feels like I've just done, did one of these and uh, I think about a month and a half ago within that time frame I've actually did a DVD and Blu-ray update which is crazy for me considering mostly I do them every two to three months. Um, but last time it got kind of insane. I had to break it up in four parts. So before the you know update gets you know out of hand, figured I would just do one of these. Um, so probably every month and a half ish time frame, you'll probably see an update from now on. I've been picking up a lot more stuff than I have in the past. Um, so I could probably get this one done in one or two parts. I don't have that many Blu-rays this time like I had last time. More DVDs, way more DVDs this time. So it kind of balances things out. With that said, let's jump into it. First up, I got a box set. And uh, I normally don't buy these multi-packs, you know, Echo Bridge, 20 film pack things. But I decided to actually grab one, and I grabbed this 15 horror movie pack. And the main reason I grabbed it was... Um, it, it's kind of more like a box set than um, the, you know slim regular DVD style cases um, that have you know like 20 films in there um, these are like mostly like the public domain style films which I try to stay away from too uh, but you know I figured maybe I could do something some kind of series on on you know these crappy sets or something uh, it was only five bucks and you know it has like uh, Cat 9 Tales and Snake People uh, Night of the Blood Beast some, so a few a few of them I've heard of before um, if you know anything about this set or know any of the films in it, let me know if any of them are worth checking out. So yeah. Um, after that, I grabbed... This is actually the reason I grabbed that set was because I grabbed this set. Um, this one has more... Um, a few films I'm actually familiar with that I, I wanted to get. There's probably way better editions to get than, uh, you know, this. Um, but, you know, a couple public domain films that I, I wanted to put in the collection, like uh, ha House on Haunted Hill, Carnival of Souls, um, The Last Man on Earth, stuff like that that I didn't own. Um, and I figured, you know, five bucks each for both of these sets. Um, 30 horror films, I'm sure I could find a couple of them enjoyable. Um, so, yeah. Let me know uh, if you know anything about these sets and recommend any of the films in them. Save me some time, you know, going through the bad ones. Let's move on to the regular DVDs. First up, we have a film that if you guys know me or follow the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast, which I'm part of, you guys know I love films like this. This film is called Nine Dead, and it's basically... A bunch of people wake up in a room chained to a pipe. A guy comes in and says, you have to figure out why you're here. Talk amongst yourselves. And every 10 minutes, I'm going to come and shoot one of yins and kill one of yins until you either figure out why you're here or you all die. Bam. Go with it. I love that setup. I love any type of setup like that. I love films set in one location where people were basically just using dialogue to carry the story. Um, that stuff really, really works for me. I've seen this one before. I like it a lot. The reveal was, you know, not the greatest, uh, but it was still a pretty solid movie and I really liked the concept. So looking forward to revisiting Nine Dead. After that, oh, by the way, I got most of these films that I'm going to show next, I got for $1.50 to $2 a piece. Um, so yeah, uh, next up we have uh, Pelt. Now, Pelt is a film that I know nothing about. Um, I just basically got it based on the cover. Um, yeah, so Pelt. <laughs> After that, we have a film that I absolutely been looking for forever and it is Candyman 2 Farewell to the Flesh. I mainly got this one um, now and not before basically by, because of price. I could not find it under you know 12 to 15 dollars used sometimes. Uh, I, mean, I think that was new. I, all I know is I was having a hard time finding this thing for the price that I wanted to pay. I can't remember the specifics. Um, but I got it for like two bucks now, so uh, that was definitely worth holding out. Um, used, but the copy is like brand new practically. Um, Candyman is fucking awesome. I, he has this presence to him that just is makes you want to, you know, fear him. Um, Tony Todd, 
fantastic. Uh, I'm, I, I've actually never seen Candyman 2 or 3. I'm going to pick up the third one, probably watch all three in a row, because I love the first one a lot. I hear the sequels take a huge step down, but I'm sure I could find some uh, way to enjoy something about them. Um, next up, let's move on a little faster. We're already five minutes into it. Uh, Mask Maker. This film, I think I seen parts of it when it was in the red box in like 2011 or something. Can't really remember much. Looking forward to you know giving it a rewatch. After that, we have Satan's Playground, and I don't know much about this film uh, besides that it has Felissa Rose in it. She was uh, Angela in Sleepaway Camp. Um, she's pretty cool from what I hear. Uh, so decided to give this one a shot just based on the you know title and who's in it. I think I did hear a few things about this one. Uh, after that, we have The Howling Reborn. Now, this is like the eighth Howling film. It's like a, I, I don't know if it's a remake or a sequel or just kind of like a rebooty thing. Um, I mainly got this just because uh, the completist in me said I had to. Um, you know, pretty much made me do it. Uh, it was cheap, so that's a, that's a plus. I still need Howling 2, which I can't find for a decent price yet. Uh, I'll get it eventually. And I need the one that has not been released in the U.S. I'll probably have to get a Region 2 copy of it. I think it's Howling 7 or uh, Howling New Moon or something, New Moon Rising. So i got to get that one. And then I'll have all the Howling films. Yay. Moving on, we have Snoop Dogg's Bones in the, in a snapper case. Um, You know, what? why not? <laughs> I do believe I've seen Bones before and, and I think I liked it. Uh, after that, we have Gangs of the Dead. Yeah, probably pretty goddamn awful, but, you know, why not? After that, we have Hood of the Living Dead, which is probably even more awful. Um, but, uh, why not? And then we have a film called Street Tales of Terror. This looks like an anthology. I love anthologies. I'm, I'm a sucker for them. I'll pretty much buy any of them especially when they're cheap and this one looks like it got a few little awards on it so maybe it'll be uh, worth watching uh, you could probably see a theme with uh, the last couple films next up we have a film called Incubus and uh, this one um, I don't know anything about I actually think this I, I was thinking that this was a different film uh, I think it I, I thought it was the one with Robert England in it um, and I don't think this is um, so yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I think an incubus is like the opposite of a succubus. It's like a male version. Uh, let me know. Any, let me know if any of these films are good, guys. Uh, a lot of them I'm unfamiliar with. Um, next up, we have a film that Jeremy talked about on uh, the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror, and uh, it's 247 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, you know, this is one of those films that takes place in one location. They're in a sauna. It's hot, and there's a scary Tyler Mayne outside that's trying to do stuff. Uh, you got Travis Van Winkle up in here, and you have uh, Scout Taylor Compton, Tyler Mayne. Um, Jeremy said it, you know, might be worth a watch for, uh, you know, something uh, that, I, you know, for the type of film that it is, it'll probably appeal to me, and I'll probably, you know, enjoy it in some way. So, yeah. Um, next up we have Hunger, and this is a Fangoria, uh, Fright Fest film. Um, I've seen this one before, I actually really liked it. It's, uh, cannibalism, and once again, bunch of people left in one location, no food, figure it out, what's gonna happen, you know, they basically have to, you know, it's, it's just one of those films, that said, if you notice I've been picking up a lot of these, I love those type of films. Um, and Hunger, I actually really enjoyed. Next up, we have Fangoria Presents The Entity. Um, don't know much about this one, uh, but, you know, these were really cheap, and I, I like the cover arts and stuff and little series of films to collect. Um, then we have Germs, or Germ Z. Um, another one of these Fangoria Presents films. <coughs> After that, we have Axed, and this is a... Another Fangoria Presents film. Uh, I heard this one was pretty bad, actually. Uh, then we have a Bloody Disgusting Selects film, Atrocious. I've heard this one was actually pretty good. Pretty good found footage stuff here, so 
Um, that kind of interests me. I like found footage when it's done good. So, you know, good found footage sounds good. After that, we have Paranormal Entity, which actually here was also not bad. Uh, this is actually an Asylum film, I believe. And, uh, you know, that's the company that does, like, the rip-offs of the popular uh, mainstream horror films and, you know, just kind of changes the title to something similar, like uh, I Am Omega instead of I Am Legend and Snakes on a Train instead of Snakes on a Plane, stuff like that. I'm sure you guys are fucking familiar with them. Uh, yeah, so Paranormal Entity actually interested in checking that one out then we have um wishmaster 3 which uh you know i needed a copy of this uh for my collection um i have one and two i've had one and two i actually have this on vhs but i've actually never watched it i i love one and two i hear three and four pretty goddamn bad but uh completist once again made me do it and i probably would have did it anyway based on curiosity um then we have Wishmaster 4, The Prophecy Fulfilled. Uh, probably no better, but, um, you know, this is a series that just seemed to vanish. You, you, would, uh, you would think they would have, you know, continued, remade it, done something. I mean, it's a solid idea, you know, be careful what you wish for. It's, it's a timeless tale that everybody knows about, and, you know, Dijin is a pretty cool villain. I, I'm, I'm not sure why this series just, you know, took a nosedive and stayed there. Um, but, yeah, moving on. We have uh, The Last Exorcism Part 2, which is possibly one of the worst titles of the year that I've heard. You know, right up there with Curse of Chucky, which is a god-awful title also. Um, if you listen to, the, once again, if you listen to 22 Shots of Moods and Horror, you know how much I hated the title Curse of Chucky. Uh, but this one's definitely worse. Last, Last Exorcism. At least it says Part 2 and then and not just 2. Um, so, yeah. You know, this is probably pretty awful, but, you know, it was cheap. After that, we have Stephen King and Clive Barker, Quicksilver Highway. Um, I didn't know that Stephen King and Clive Barker teamed up, so... Um, knowing that they teamed up, that's kind of fucking cool. Uh, but I've not heard of uh, much about this one, so that kind of um, makes it seem... Makes me a little nervous about it, because that I wish... That sounds really awesome, but, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work like that, you know. Um, horror movie math, I guess. You know, one plus one doesn't always equal two uh, when you're talking about horror films. So, yeah, Quicksilver Highway, uh, looking forward to checking it out. You know, I, I'm, I, I've said it before, I'm trying to get any Stephen King adaptation style thing that I can, and uh, that one looked, uh, you know, decent. Next up, we have Wes Craven's Invitation to Hell. Once again, I'm trying to get every uh, Wes Craven film I can, so this is one that I didn't have. And uh, one that I've actually not heard anything about. Uh, pretty much absolutely nothing I know about this film. So, you know, grabbing, grabbing them as I can. And after that, we have Stephen King's Desperation. Um, not really heard much about this one either, but, you know, grabbing all the Stephen King stuff I can. Sometimes I feel like I repeat myself way too much in these updates, uh, but that's just how it goes, I guess. After that, we have a film called Rottweiler, which, from what I hear, is pretty bad. But I like killer animal movies, and sometimes I even like the bad ones, but I hear this one's really, really bad. So, be on the lookout for hating that one. Uh, then we have Lake Placid, which is also another one of these you know, killer animal movies, but Lake Placid's actually pretty awesome, uh, the first one is, is pretty awesome, uh, the second one is pretty bad, the third one's pretty bad, and the fourth one's, you know, pretty bad, um, and now they're doing Lake Placid versus Anaconda, from what I hear, yeah, that's an actual title, Lake Placid versus Anaconda, um, think about that one for a second, so, um, we actually have a couple more DVDs, but uh, I, I guess I'll just throw that in on the second part because, um, you know, this video is already up on like 15 minutes. So I'll see you guys in part two. Peace.